Hello, Michael here with another how do I render tutorial. Today we're going to be having a look at how to render scratches, uh, more specifically sort of micro scratch scratches that you would see on a polished surface um, from like a polishing cloth. It's not very visible until you get up close, close and you sort of normally see it in the highlights. We're going to be doing this with RenderMan 22, but you'll see that I'm in Photoshop at the moment. The first thing we're going to do is actually create a map to base our scratches on. So I'm just going to create a new folder. It's going to be 4096 by 4096, um, so 4K, and we'll hit OK. And basically what you want to do is um, create a new layer here. We're just going to create a bunch of lines with a small brush. It's only got three pixels. You could go down to one if you wanted. Um, you can basically make all the lines the same width, uh, but you just want to vary the length and what we're going to do is sort of fill up this like so. Um, I'm just going to sort of brush over this part because I'll show you the finished product in a bit. But the next thing we want to do, once you're happy with the amount that you filled that up, um, just making sure that you stay away from the edges because we're going to make this seamless. You don't want to be clipping the edges like that. So once you're happy with the amount you've done there, you can go to filter, other, offset, use half the dimension of your um, map so 2048 in this instance and you'll see that it's offset everything so then you can continue to fill it up as much as you like and then if you hit control f it'll offset again and you just keep doing that staying away from the edges and now you can sort of rotate your direction um, you can change the opacity of your brush control f again and continue to do that just try and fill up all the spaces there and don't be worried about doing them, you know, doing the lines too close together or, or, you know, crossing over each other, that's fine. Just looking for good coverage. So um, I'll show you one that I cooked up earlier. All right, so that's with a few different offsets and I've just used some different values of brush that you can see. Um, I wasn't using my mouse, I was using my tablet. So you can see that I've sort of got a little bit more fall off at the edge of the um, each of the scratch um, lines which is uh, going to produce a nicer effect. So that's sort of the density you're looking for. Um, now with this sort of thing, you could obviously just download Scratch's texture from the internet, but it is kind of good to know the process as well. Um, so if you've got this on two separate layers, um, you are going to want to merge them down. Uh, make sure you save this as a separate Photoshop document so you can go back in and edit this later. Just in case you wanted to use this as a mask for something in the future, it is good to have the um, base image there, but I'm just going to merge this layer down. So we've got one, then we're going to go to uh, filter and grab the NVIDIA normal map filter. This is a plugin that you'll need to grab from the NVIDIA website. I'll leave in a link in the description. So we'll click that. Uh, these are the settings that we're going to use. Basically, um, the things that you're going to change is four samples. Um, animate light, I think, is on by default. You need to change that. I think it's average RGB by default. You want max RGB and alpha field unchanged. Hit OK. And then if you're familiar with normal maps, you'll see that this actually looks like a normal map now. It's got our normal color directions, which when we feed it into Maya, Maya will understand which way to point the light when light is being directed at it. So let's jump into Maya now and apply this map. Uh, save it out, obviously. Save it as a TIFF or something that's 32-bit. Like that. As you can see, I've already done some tests. Um, so yeah, save that out and we'll jump into Maya. Okay, here we are in Maya. Um, I've just created a scene here that's got an environment daylight and a couple of um, lights as well on our sphere that I've also already created. Um, so what we're going to want to do is assign a shader to our sphere. So we'll just assign a Pixar surface shader. You could also use a layer shader. I'm just going to keep this pretty simple um, just to show you how to layer up. Um, some normal maps. So we'll just jump into the Hypershade Editor. And this is our um, scratch material, so we'll just call this Pixar Scratches. And the first thing we want to do is create a normal map node and just run that into the bump normal. Um, now instead of using the file input, um, we're actually going to use the RGB input because I want to actually layer a couple of versions of my normal map on top of each other. Uh, but to start with, I'll just do one. So we'll just uh, create a picture texture and we'll just duplicate that 
three times because I'm going to make three layers. And for the moment, I'm just going to plug that straight into the input RGB. And then we're just going to open up our scratches TIFF uh, that I created. You can see that I've already done this one because I've created a .txt file. Um, so if we open that up and then I run an IPR, um, you'll see here that you can just see the scratches on it. Um, now there is one problem, these scratches are actually inverted, so they're actually sort of like look more like welts than they look like scratches into the surface at the moment. So the reason for that is, we could have probably fixed this when we're doing it in Photoshop, um, but you just need to go into your normal map and invert bump, and that will do that. And then to make this look more like a scratch surface, we're actually going to use our face color um, and I'm just going to make it a little bit more rough for the moment. And if we IPR, you'll see that we've got scratches on our ball. Now this looks good if you just want a sort of rough scratchy surface, that's probably okay. Um, but we can actually make this look a little bit more interesting. So we'll stop that. So back in the Hypershade editor, we are going to create a PXR blend. And this is going to allow us to blend two different normal maps together, or two of the same normal map actually. So this can be um, bottom RGB, and this new one here, we'll just run into the top RGB, and then we'll load the same map. Um, because I've rendered this, it's created a .txt file, so we're actually just going to use that um, for both of them. And now what we're going to do is we're going to create a couple of manifold nodes. Uh, make sure you grab the 2D one, otherwise it will spaz out and you can duplicate that. So we're just going to run the results into the white thing and it'll give us manifold and the result into the other one and it'll give us manifold. Um, and then we'll just connect our result RGB up to the input RGB of our normal map and just render it. All right, so essentially uh, that is going to look the same as our last render um, because these are the same size, these maps. So they're just overlaying each other and actually the blend node is not going to allow the bottom one to be visible. So in our blend, we're going to change that to be overlay. Um, using multiply or something like that will actually make the colors multiply which will be no good for your normals. You'll get normals going in directions that you wouldn't expect. And then we are going to change the scale. So this first one, I'm just gonna increase the repeats. So it's gonna repeat five times on the S and the T. And then this one's gonna repeat 10 times. So this one here going into the top RGB is actually gonna be smaller than this one here. Um, and the top one, I'm gonna reduce this to 0.5 and the bottom can be, we'll call that 1.0. So we'll run that IPR again. So if we have a look back here, you can see quite, cl quite clearly visible. And here it's very difficult to see. We're gonna have to zoom in. And now you can see around the highlights that um, we're getting those scratches. And actually I've just noticed that these don't appear correct. I think there's an inverted texture there. So, ah, there it is. In the manifold, by default, it's got invert T, so that's no good. So if I run that IPR, you might be able to see the difference. All right, so that was the original one, and this is what you're looking at getting. So the scratches should be should be sort of circling the the specular highlights, as you can see they are there, and here they're sort of kind of going like para, little parabolas, sort of just in a para, parabolic pattern. Um, but you can kind of notice that if you've looked at this a couple of times. So that's what you're sort of looking for there. Pro it's very obvious at the moment. This is the, these are actually quite deep looking scratches. We're going to back this off a little bit later on. Um, but we're going to add one more layer in first. So we can't actually put another uh, texture into this blend node because there's only two inputs. But we can put the blend node into another blend node. So what we want to do is grab this uh, Pixar texture and we're going to grab the TIFF text again. We'll create another manifold 2D, and we'll remember to turn off invert T, run the result into the manifold input, and then we're going to grab another Pixar blend 
and this one is going to go into the top and this one is going to go into the bottom RGB. The blend with these two inputs is going into the bottom blend of this new blend that we created with our new texture. This new texture, we're going to make it 15. So this is going to be the most repeats that we've seen so far. And then just make sure the um, last blend goes into the input RGB of the normal map. And with this blend, uh, the top blend, we're going to blend it 0.5. And the bottom alpha, we want to um, keep it at 1.0 because it's already being reduced in the previous blend. Um, probably maybe call that bottom alpha 0.75. Yeah, because otherwise that's going to make that smaller again if you lower this anymore. And we could probably make that 0.25. All right. And just make sure that that is set to overlay. And then we can IPR again. Now something you might be noticing because we're just reducing the size of each of these layers is that you're sort of seeing some doubling of the scratches. So to randomize that a little, what we're going to do is rotate uh, two of those by 45 degrees and then 90 for that one. And that's just going to make it look a little bit more random. Might even want to rotate that a little bit more. Okay, so that's starting to look a little bit better. Still a little bit obvious looking, um, so we can make that a little bit more subtle. So, and I still think the size of these might be a bit large, because it sort of depends on how big you think this ball is. Say it's about the size of a, I don't know, a small basketball. Um, those scratches are actually very large from micro scratches. So we could actually go a little bit more extreme with these scales. So I'm going to start with 10 and then the next one can be 20 and then the final one can be 30. Now because these scratches are such a um, subtle thing you're going to need quite a few samples to start to see the detail but if we just compare this which is you know blatantly obvious <laughs> versus this you can start to see that it's just creating a little bit of extra swirly detail on the specular highlights, which is what you want. Then you'll also see it a little bit more sometimes in the darker areas where it's receiving reflection from beneath and the odd little ones out there and there. And sort of you can sort of see it around here as well if it's being picked up on the video. One final thing you could actually do, if you think that those scratches are still looking too deep once you've rendered it up, you can jump back into the Hypershade Editor, select your normal map. Um, node and you can just change the surface normal max so we could change that to something like 0.8 I'm just going to bring it right down so you see a lot more of the surface normal than the normal map the normal and then I'll just render this up uh, actually we're going to have to use 0.5 I think 0.8 might be a little bit too much surface normal all right so that's basically rendered up now and you can see that's a lot more subtle compared to that if you're just wanting for some very fine surface scratches that's probably going to possibly work a little bit better for you depending on how close your camera is obviously the more obviously you make it look the further away the camera is it's going to be able to pick it up a lot easier and you'll probably have to render to not the highest sample rate this is up to uh, I think I've got it rendered up to 512 samples I haven't actually changed the pixel variance pixel variance would also help if you wanted to in, uh, decrease the pixel variance um, you'd probably find that renders up a little bit cleaner as well. Um, so that is pretty much it. Then really the only thing left to do with something like this is um, you can use an HDRI to light a little bit nicer if you want um, or you can add some specular roughness. Uh, you can randomize it if you want or you can you know, run it off a map in a very similar way. Um, you could blend some uh, nodes together using manifolds using the same method and just playing them into the um, specular uh, roughness. Uh, but maybe I could show that on a separate tutorial. For this one, that's all I really wanted to show was these just nice little swirly scratches that you can sort of see there quite nicely. Um, just built up by blending a few different normal maps and creating them very simply uh, in Photoshop. 
So yes, hopefully that has been an interesting uh, and useful tutorial for all of you out there. If you did like it, make sure you click the like button so other people can find it on YouTube. And if you haven't already, make sure you're subscribed as I do usually a video a week on all sorts of 3D type stuff like Random Man um, and Scratches. Um, if you'd like to stay up to date even further, check out the Facebook page, link in the description. You can also see my work on my Instagram page, link in the description. Also, link to that uh, NVIDIA plugin as well. That's it for now though. Thank you very much for watching and happy rendering.